Hey there, welcome back to the greater you. Good to see everybody today. Uh, as if I can see you right. <laughs> I love that idea. Uh, but I do always imagine kind of a worldwide audience of people that are looking for uh, tips on wellness, wellness and well-being. So here we are to talk about one of my favorite topics of, of wellness, which is resilience. I love this topic. It's so huge. Um, what is resilience? It's our ability to bounce back from difficulties. It's that ability that when you, you're you out there, you know, whatever it is you're playing, some sport, you're out there playing basketball and you, you know, fall and crash and burn. And then you get up and you dust yourself off and you get, get back in the game. It's that ability to get back up after we've had difficulties that have, uh, you know, caused setbacks for us. Life is filled with setbacks. They can be time setbacks. They can be a uh, skill, uh, lacking of a skill. It can be lacking a talent or lacking time or, you know, difficulties organizing. The list is endless of things that cause setbacks. We may lose sight of a dream and get distracted. Uh, we might just get distracted by our cell phones. We might get, uh, you know, hurt. We might be harboring some, you know, physical or mental or emotional injury that makes it hard to focus or to think or to produce the way we would like to um, and to be as productive as we'd like to. So life can be really hard. We all know it. You guys that are watching this video, you've probably been through some in immensely difficult times. I've been through my own immensely difficult times. Resilience is this deep mental fortitude that we can develop. It's a learnable trait. It's a growable trait to be able to dust ourselves off and stand, stand up once again after having, you know, fallen down. Here's a couple of tips for today to think about. Now, clearly, when we work with people on resilience, we find that there's a lot to do to build resilience. This is not a full comprehensive list. This is just two ideas for you to think about. And if you would like to get further training in resilience, every one of our life coaches are resilient people having been there, done that themselves, and are trained in ways to help you build resilience, myself included. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of tips here, though, that you can jump on and use and embrace immediately. The first one is the power of the positive mindset. As you train your mind to focus on the silver linings, no matter how small they may seem, the small victories of life, including just the fact that you stood up again, that you're still going, that's ways to begin to shift your mind into a resilient mindset. It becomes fuel for you to, to get that energy you need to keep going one step in front of the time. You know, it's that idea that uh, each step that you're taking on a hike, say you're on a 20 mile hike, every single step that you're taking towards the peak is one step closer to the destination. The positive mindset focuses on those successes. It focuses on the gains. It focuses on the wins. So embracing that positive mindset by really focusing in on those, even no matter how small they are, those little victories. And then, of course, write them down. Once a day, write down your victories. I think it's a really good thing to do. One to five victories. Write it down. Every single day, what are my victories today? I was teaching a martial arts class yesterday to our advanced students, and we we were in the middle of testing, putting them through the paces, and I stopped everything, and we went around, and we talked about what are your wins so far. That helps shift everyone's mindset into that positive focus and helps them recognize, okay, wait, I can do this, even when we're doing hard things, especially when we're doing hard things. Okay, the second point here is to learn from our setbacks. People that use a resilient mindset, they develop the ability to see all setbacks as data to give you information on different possible outcomes and things that you need to learn and adjust and adapt. If we continually find ourselves having the same setback, there's a lesson that has not been learned. And if we can figure out, discern and learn, as we always talk about at The Greater You, discern what those lessons are and then embrace them and learn from them and apply those lessons into our lives, we can then develop the strength to stand back up. Imagine that anything that you're doing, right? You know, I rock climb, so you hear analogies with rock climbing. If you're wanting to get up some 
you know, crazy pitch and there's a really tricky spot in there. The way that you get to the top of the climb is by repeatedly trying different techniques, learning from your mistakes to get you through the sticky spots. You know, you keep falling off the wall and slamming into the wall. You've got to try a different technique. You've got to try a different angle. There needs to be a different leverage point. Where are your hips? Where's your toe? It's usually that big toe. You know, where, where are you focusing your balance? And as we make those the adjustments, then we can get up to the top of the climb of life, right? So learn from the setback, the setbacks that you have from the failures that we all go through, those, those mistakes, those uh, times where we fall on our face, right? So instead of dwelling on the failure itself, shift it to a learning opportunity. Reflect on what went wrong, extract those lessons, and then apply them. Use those, uh, those lessons and apply those lessons to your life to improve your performance and to get the outcomes that you were trying to get the first time. You know, we want to always adapt and flow and be like water on that one too, right? That if we if we're super determined, so think about this, a person who's very, very determined to get somewhere, but they're only going to do it in one way. Well, that person's probably going to meet with resistance that can completely shut them down, right? But if we're adaptable, when you get to the obstacles, you're going to figure out how do I go around it? How do I go under it? How do I get through it? How do I go over it? You're going to look for ways around the obstacle rather than staring at the obstacle and getting into uh, that fight with the obstacle. It reminds me of Dr. Seuss, a book back when I was a small kid. There was the, the North going Zacks and the South going Zacks, and they both just wanted to go South or North, and they weren't ever going to move. And then they met and stood there face to face and said, well, I only ever go North. Well, I only ever go South. And some of you that are Gen Xers or older have probably seen that. Um, you millennials go look it up. It's probably been landed on YouTube somewhere. There's a video around it. But the idea is that it demonstrates that inflexible mindset. Part of being resilient is absolutely developing a flexible mindset. And that flexibility will lead to finding creative solutions beyond that which you can see in front of your face in the moment. Remember that feeling you get when you do have a setback? Oh my gosh, it can feel like the rug got pulled out from under you. You're falling flat on your face. You didn't catch yourself. You didn't roll with the fall. You didn't do what we call in martial arts, which is breaking the fall through you know techniques that stop the fall from hurting. You just bounced right off the pavement. And there you are on your face, eating the dirt. And it just, it feels emotionally and mentally like, wow, failure is, an, is imminent, right? In that moment, we have to use some grace and patience with ourselves and say like, okay, Right now, this stings, but it's not always going to sting like this. And I can dust myself up. I can roll back to my feet. I can get up and dust off. I can ask for help. I can reach out and be like, oh, man, I'm super dizzy right now. I just fell on the, on the ground and get somebody to help you onto your feet. You know, ask for help from support systems, friends, family, coworkers, colleagues, bosses, uh, you know, anyone in your network don't try and do all this alone resilient people don't do the lone wolf thing very often that's you know there's some i don't know romanticized idea of being this really strong individual that just goes and does all by myself yeah right we're social creatures you need help just like i do <laughs> uh the idea that you can go it alone will only get you so far right so resilient people, they're flexible of mind and they use their networks. So really, we went beyond these two, two ideas. But I think there's a lot there to think about. Uh, like this video if you liked it. Drop your comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear experiences that you're having that have tested your resolve and ways that you've gotten around it to be resilient in your own life. So that's it for the greater you today. Thank you so much for your time and we'll talk soon.